Welcome to Learnpedia. Score more and rank better in JE and NEET. Now let's see if you can answer this important question. If you think you got the answer, then post it in the comment section below. To know the best way to answer this question, continue watching this video. The structure of skeletal muscle cell. Generally in human body, there are nearly 700 skeletal muscles. Usually they occur in the form of bundles of numerous parallel striated muscle fibers. The structural unit of skeletal muscle cells are elongated striated muscles or myofilaments. Each muscle bundle is enclosed in a connective tissue called epimysium. It is made up of connective tissue that is irregular dense fibrous tissue. It encloses numerous small muscle bundles. These are called fasciculi and these are covered by another connective tissue which is called perimysium. So a muscle bundle is covered by epimysium, a fascicle is covered by perimysium and each fasciculum is in turn formed by several muscle fibers and each muscle fiber is in turn covered by endomysium and skeletal muscles are attached to bones by tendons and tendons as you know they are formed by entirely of collagen fibers and each muscle fiber contain myofibrils so these tendons are tough inelastic and capable of very sudden stress and tendons are present at the ends of the skeletal muscle cells and all these muscles have origin in one bone and their insertion is on another bone and thus the muscles span at least one or sometimes two joints generally the thick part of the muscle bundle is called belly so if you look into the origin and insertion of the muscle, suppose this one is the collar bone. This is humerus, the radius and ulna, carpals and metacarpals, which ends in phalanges or digits. Here, suppose this one is the muscle bundle, and the central bulged part is called belly, and the one end of this tendon attached to a mobile bone. This portion is called insertion of the muscle. Whereas the other end of the tendon, it may attach to some fixed bone. Then you can say it is the origin of the muscle. And remember, always a muscle cell contract from insertion towards origin. And when muscle cell con muscle contracts, it becomes short and exert pressure on the mobile bones at the joint and draw towards the flexible or towards the fixed bone like this. And flexible connective tissue band called ligaments stabilize, these are the ligaments, they stabilize the joints by holding the articulating bones together. These two are articulating bones. Let us examine a skeletal muscle in detail to understand the structure and mechanism of contraction. Each organized skeletal muscle in our body is made up of a number of muscle bundles. These muscle bundles are also called fascicles. Each fascicle contains a number of cylindrical muscle fibers and the fascicles are held together by a common collagenous covering that is called fascia and it is made up of collagen which is a fibrous protein and it is the chief protein in human body and each fascicle contain inside the each muscle fiber there are large number of parallelly arranged filaments called myofilaments or they are also called myofibrils and each myofibril contains basic structural and functional unit of muscle cell 
that is called sarcomere. That is how a skeletal muscle is made up of several muscle bundles or fascicles. Each muscle bundle contains several muscle fibers and each muscle fiber contains several myofibrils and each myofibril otherwise called myofilament consists of several sarcomeres. Actually sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of striated muscle. So let us see the ultra structure of a skeletal muscle fiber. Actually each skeletal muscle fiber is cylindrical in shape and it shows several its plasma membrane is called sarcolemma. Below the sarcolemma there are large number of nuclei. This condition is called syncytial condition or multinucleate condition and actually each cell contain one prominent nucleus but in a skeletal muscle cell or muscle fiber why there is a syncytial condition because during embryonic development muscle fibers are derived from mesoderm and in the in, during embryonic development say these are all 100 myoblast cells and uh, of these 100 one becomes skeletal muscle cell remaining all of them they contribute their cytoplasm and other components to the developing cell that is why it shows multinucleate condition whereas the unfused cell it becomes stem cell that is called satellite cell and uh, inside the cytoplasm there are parallelly arranged myofibrils and each myofibril is divided into several sarcomeres so sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of the cell and the center of the sarcomere is dark in color and that is why it is called so if you observe all these sarcomeres i bands a bands are at the center so why it is called a band because if you pass polarized light through this myofibril it will refract when it pass through thick part and it will not refract while passing through the eye bands that is why it is called striated muscle and the in case of mammals the sarcolemma folds into the middle of the a band touching each sarcomere and these infoldings are called and attached to the t tubules cisterne are nothing but endoplasmic reticulum they are attached to T tubules with the help of a protein called dystrophin. Now, the two cisterne and one T tubule is collectively called a triad. So, triad is equal to one T tubule plus two cisterne are collectively called triad. And T tubule is connected to cisterne with the help of dystrophin protein. And since it is a metabolically active cell, cytoplasm contains large number of mitochondria and ribosomes are also large in number and the nerves penetrate through perimysium and endomysium level, they will give branch to each one. This junction is called neuromuscular junction and this release acetylcholine to excite the sarcolemma. Structure of sarcomere. Actually, each myofibril has several alternate dark and light bands. This one is dark band, here marginal ones are light bands. And a detailed study of myofibril has established that the striated muscle appearance is due to the distribution of two important proteins they are called actin and myosin and the light band containing actin and the distance between two z lines is called sarcomere that means a myofibril shows several sarcomeres and center shows dark band whereas periphery shows light band 
the portion of the myofibril between two successive Z lines is called sarcomere. And sarcomere is the structural and functional unit of contraction. In a resting relaxed state, the edges of the thin filaments encroach into A band. The electron microscopic structure of sarcomere reveals that they are delineated by a very thin and comparatively disc like one called Z disc. And A band is also called anisotropic band which is present at the center of the sarcomere. Adjacent to this A band lies a light colored I band. They are present on either side of the A band and alternate arrangement of dark bands and light bands that gives the striated appearance of the skeletal muscle. And at the center of the A band, comparatively, a less dark zone is present. This is called H zone. And the M line is present as a thread that connect the myofilaments. So, this M line is nothing but a chain like protein that suspend all thick filaments. This is called M line. A thin protein that form a structural protein of sarcomere. This is called titanium. So here each thick filament is surrounded by actin filaments or thin filaments. And the marginal zone this is called Z line. Z line is also called crosis membrane. It is also called Doby line or Doby's line. Hey there, hope you understood the concept. Here's the answer to the question that was asked in the beginning. Keep watching to give an edge to your JE and need preparation. Learn BDS JE and Need Prep tools contain over 4,000 videos and over 20,000 questions. You can access them online through our website or offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also try a free demo of the product before buying.